I'd like to start, of course, with the basics. So we're going to hear the three main eight-foot principal tone stops on the great organ um, in ascending order of size. So we're starting with the guide. And do have a look at your specifications if you want to keep in touch. The specifications are printed in your handouts, so you can have a you can have a look and follow me through. So we've got first the Geigen, the stringy diapason, then the small open diapason, and then the purple sound of the large open diapason on the great. on which the great organ is built um, and now we're going to hear in turn the build-up of the great organ and we're going to go this is going to be the original great chorus here so we're going to go up the harmonics one of those not notorious Harrison mixtures with a 19th and a 22nd and a flat 21st and a, uh, and a 15th and You'll hear the build-up then to those harmonics, including the double on the grade. harmonics stop is often very much misunderstood and the really learned man about this is Dr. Harry Brammer who had one put back on the organ of All Saints Margaret Street a few years ago. It was the first harmonics I think that he made in England since the start of the Second World War and um, it was um, he, he points out that it throws out down these extraordinary resultants. You can actually play a hymn tune on the harmonics and think on its own and think that you've got all the other stops drawn to, com to complete a chorus. So it does go, contrary to what some people think, it does actually go, as you can hear quite well, with a flu chorus. But you'll hear also how it adds harmonic richness to the rather smooth reeds that are characteristic of this and other Harrison organs of the period. So, now then, we, um, in 1974, we added a four rank, a five rank mixture without a um, 17, so a quint mixture on the grate. And so now we're going to hear the same chorus with that mixture instead of the harmonics. Quite a different sound, isn't it? And um, I think equally effective. Now we're going to add the three great reeds, they're quite big, these great reeds, on, on the north side there. Um, they're on 12 inch wind pressure, and uh, you get plenty of energy there. So we'll add, we'll, we'll add the three great reeds, one after the other. swell organ which is in that chamber that as I mentioned um, the chamber it has shutters on both sides facing both west and south um, and we'll hear the swell principal chorus now um, building up to the mixture 
and um, you'll hear the contrast in sound between that and the break. <laughs> As we did before, we're going to add the swell reeds, the chorus reeds, that is, one by one. And at the end, you're going to hear one of the great luxuries of this organ, which is the 32-foot trombone, enclosed in the swell box, and enormously useful for mezzo forte combinations and very versatile stop. So here we go. swell organ than that, I'd like somebody to point me in the right direction. I know there are some good Willis ones as well, but that really is very special. Again, the reeds there on remarkably high pressure, but quite controlled on 12 inches of wind. So now, let's get the relationship between the great and the swell, and we'll hear the great to harmonics, um, the great principal chorus to harmonics, and we'll contrast that with the full swell and we'll hear them alternately. with the quint mixture and then we're going to add the swell to the great and get that classic effect of the caged tiger um, snarling at you through the great and hear how those two just listen to the way in which those two departments join together. was added in 1947. Right, well, you've heard the imperial sounds of this organ, and um, we'll now, let's, let's take, a, take a break and have um, some, some of the different sounds now. Um, Andrew's going to give us a fantasia for the flutes, starting with the great, and then, uh, which is a stopped diapason, and you hear how different they all are, and how interesting the sounds are. But starting with the great stopped diapason, then we'll have the swell, which has a harmonic flute at eight foot, then the choir, which has a clarabelle, and then the echo organ, which has a Lieblich with pierced stoppers. And just listen to those, and if you fancy adding, scattering a few four-foot flutes around Andrew, do feel free. Let's now turn to the choir organ. 
I mentioned that this is one of the two accompanimental divisions on the south side, it's unenclosed, and I'd like you to listen to the foundation stops on this. As you see, we have an open diapason, a clarabelle flute, a gamba, and then there's a double dulciana, rather a Harrison favourite. I think you'll be realizing now that like any good organ, it's the blend of the stops that is the wonderful thing here, that it gives you, an, with 71 stops, it gives you an infinite variety almost of, uh, of sounds. And the way those stops blend together is one of the secrets of success here. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that makes this organ so inexhaustibly interesting. Let's hear the build up of the choir now, the choir through chorus, building up to the mixture, starting with the dulciana. Very useful, helpful little department, concealed, amazingly enough, behind that panelling on the south side of the chancel, but still the sound gets out really quite well, surprisingly well. Now then, here's the... Can everybody hear me, by the way? Are you all right? Yeah? <coughs> Shout if you can't. Good. Um, let's now have a look at the echo organ. Um, <coughs> the flute chorus, we're going, to, uh, we're going to start with the strings on the echo organ, Solitional and Vox Angelica. These are the, the, the quiet, restful strings that you would normally expect to, 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 to find on the swell organ, and here they are, logically enough, because this is an accompanimental division, you find them on the echo, and then we'll hear the echo chorus build up, and we'll include the oboe and the double clarinet on the um, uh, on that division, which um, makes a really effective and rather surprising mini full swell. Yes, I saw one or two people getting their handkerchiefs out there, but wait, you haven't heard it all yet. Um, and let's hear those interesting reeds. So that double clarinet was, became rather a favorite of H&H &H for small organs. I think this was probably the pioneer, as, and um, Arthur Harrison realized this, what a useful stop this is uh, for a small organ where you've um, not got much scope for, for, for um, large numbers of stops and he quite often put it into a small organ with a cornucopia or even with an oboe like this to give a sort of full swell effect like that. So you do find it in, in, in other organs of slightly later date. Um, let's hear that clarinet on its own now as a solo stop and also the oboe so that you can hear their quality individually.
They're good, aren't they? Now, for different strings, you see, the ones that you would normally find on the solo, well, here they are on the swell, in full measure. Uh, well, they haven't got a mixture. We'll, that'll, that'll be a pipe dream for another day. But um, the, little, the chorus of strings here is, is very special, very narrow scale, very edgy, very exciting. Uh, lots of harmonic development in them. So we'll, hear the, um, we'll start with the eight foots and then build them up. I think he quite likes this organ, don't you? <laughs> now, I just like just talking about blend still. Um, we've had now a flavor of the choir and the echo and the swell foundations, and I'd just like you to listen to them a little more so that you can hear how those three departments blend seamlessly together. specials now. The Vox Humana on the swell has had a check of history. There was a period when Vox Humanas were regarded as anathema by British organists and scorned. And so this stop in Garth Benson's day was actually disconnected in the 1950s, but he had, them reinstate, had it reinstated in 1974 when the fashion had changed. So let's hear that Vox Humana now. And the swell, uh, uh, the, the swell orchestral reeds, which of course again you'd normally find on the solo, they work perfectly from that position um, because it gives them that, just that little bit of distance, uh, but they, they're incisive enough to cross that space and blend with the rest of the organ. So we'll hear the cor anglais, I think a very special, I don't think anyone does better cor anglais than Harrison and Harrison. And um, the, so first the cor anglais and then the orchestral oboe. I know one or two benighted souls who don't like orchestral oboes, can't understand it at all. Um, you noticed it was in tune, by the way. Um, the cue for me to mention Duncan Bennett, who's looked after this organ for several decades and still does a fabulous job here keeping it, keeping it in tune. Quite a challenge, of course, with the organ being spread around the building considerably. Um, we have the luxury of two clarinets in this organ. One is the corno di Passetto on the choir, and the other is the echo clarinet. Let's hear them both. You'll hear the difference between them.
Well, that's a, a lightning tour of almost all the stops. I wonder which one I've forgotten. Perhaps somebody will tell me in a moment. Um, you'll have heard what a strong musical personality this organ has. And I think it's particularly good this morning that Peter is going to talk about how this organ is used for playing the repertoire. I went, I think I, it's not too much tales out of school. There was a time when um, there was a thought of that the organ in King's College, Cambridge, might be ditched and um, replaced with a Riga. I'm pleased to say that didn't happen. <laughs> um, and in fact, it's one of the organs that we're working on at the moment. Um, it'll be finished at the end of next year in time of carol service. Um, and the theory then was that you couldn't really play anything there much uh, on that sort of organ, except sort of middle period howls. <laughs> and um, anyway, fortunately, um, that, that theory was, um, <laughs> was dismissed and we, we got the chance to uh, keep the organ going. An organ like this is far more versatile than its history and stop list would suggest. And um, I think you'll be hearing more about this from Peter. But I just want to say, uh, as far as um, this type of organ is concerned, that because of its force of personality, it contributes enormously um, a, a sort of a, a wonderful stylistic flavor to music from many countries and many different periods, um, not in the sense of producing an authentic performance necessarily, but, produce, uh, uh, but producing a performance of great musicality. This sort of organ does not thrive from trying to squeeze it into a different, from trying to pretend it's a Baroque organ, for example, there's no real future in that. But the, um, the actual versatility of it is proved by the way in which the stops blend. Well, there we are, we've got two minutes to go. Um, and which was the stop I haven't mentioned? Oh, come on. <laughs> we haven't heard the tuba yet. So, uh, we'll finish then. It's um, in, the, in, in the next 90 seconds, we'll hear the tuba and the full organ. Cheerio. <laughs>